apologize first and foremost. My nose is a little running, and I don't know how this happened because I absolutely adore the weather. I think Texas got me. I was in Texas, and I was delayed because, you know, when snow hits Texas, it's a, it, all hell breaks loose. But I made it back last night because I had a, one of my favorite guys, Lil Wayne, was here um, to think of some wonderful things to bless us and encourage our relationship. Let me start by saying I absolutely love Boulder, Colorado. I really do. It was a hidden gem for me because I had no idea. For years, I ain't never been skiing. I really never played in the snow. And 14 years of the NFL, God just blessed me that much. But now I'm just ecstatic about Vail and everything associated to this. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get into a home so I could lay down and chill and have my dog run around the yard and, and, and have, call the place home. But this is unbelievable. I had no idea. And I thank you for you welcoming me. You're making me feel pleasant. Welcome my, my family, my kids, everybody. Our new uh, signees, the whole football team, staff, coaches, everyone that we brought. You have made them feel impeccably good. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. Recruiting staff recruited over 150 schools putting this magnificent class together. In December, in five days, the staff recruited nine states ahead of the early signing period on the 15th. Um, in January, in 10 days, the staff visited 19 states. Um, junior day this past weekend was phenomenal. When I tell you that I could still see some of the parents' faces and the kids and uh, how excited they were when they walked around the complex, when they got to sit down with the coaches, when they articulated their dream and their vision with me. And uh, <laughs> we're going to have some commits that you're going to hear later on about that 24 class, but it was a phenomenal day. I mean, uh, 67 recruits from 24, 25, 26, and 27 over the two days, the recruits visited from 15 states and they um, bought. I'm serious, some of you done reports on them, three and four stars, even though I don't give a darn about a star, these kids can flat out play and they uh, are who we think they are. Um, signing class newcomers, 42 new scholarship players to date, which is incredible. 29 are already in, in already enrolled in the spring. Um, six new walk-ons. Uh, one play for me in high school, and he, I can't wait to see how he comes about. He's phenomenal. Um, there are 35 newcomers on the spring football roster. Um, six spring walk-ons. 47 newcomers in 2023 to date. Um, newcomers from 16 different states and two countries, which is awesome. 16 states uh, is the most in CU's history. 13 in, uh, way back in 78 when I had hair, a lot of hair, full head of hair. Um, 18 different territories. That sounds really good. Good job. I mean, I mean, it sounds really good. You did a great job on that. Great job. Can you give him a clap? Good job. Good, good job. You're making this stuff sound incredible. Okay. I like it. They're almost uh, 14 in 1978. This is the first season since 78 that the most players didn't come from California, Colorado, Texas. Florida is in the lead with seven players, and I plan on doubling that. I love my Florida boys. I know what they're going to give me. I know who they are. I know how they're raised. And uh, we have tremendous relationships bringing those kids from Florida. Once they realize it ain't that cold, it's going to be all good for my Florida boys. Uh, class of most signees from Florida, seven, and Georgia, four in uh, CU history. Class rankings, they said, good, guess what number we are ranked? 21. God is something else, isn't it? 21 ranking overall, the best in 15 seasons. Number four ranking for transfers, easily the best in CU's history, only the second in the top 40. With Kamani and Travis, first time CU signed two five-star players in the same class, same position, by the way, and both of them are dogs. I can't wait to see them play together. Of seven other four-star recruits in this class, the more, most four-star recruits in the class in CU history, and nine four- or five-star recruits in the program, the best. CU is the only school in 2023 to sign a five-star recruit from high school in the and the transfer portal, which is phenomenal. Um, yeah. Okay, the other topics, black and gold day, spring football games. Uh, we start practice March 19th, four practices that week. We're going to be off the following week due to spring break. I really hate practicing then, have them spring break because they forget every darn thing they, you taught them. Okay, then uh, the game is part of the black and gold day on April the 22nd that kicks off at 1 p.m. Now to coaching staff, 
between the 10 position coaches and five analysts, uh, those 15 coaches, five have served as head coaches previously, combined 244 years, um, 75 at power five level, and 52 as offensive defense coordinator, which is awesome. Uh, been a part of 49 10 win seasons. That means these guys know what they're doing. Okay. They told me to stay away from a couple things, but I would stay away from those. And the rest is on you. That was awesome. All right. We'll open up for questions. And uh, for your first question, please introduce yourself to coach again. Okay. Kind of shy away from names. Um, um, I'm not familiar with everyone's name. All the players' names, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to pretend I am. I will give them nicknames when it's appropriate, and I will call them by their names. So we got names on the back of their shirts right now, but I'm not familiar with every kid, just to help you out. And I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just being honest. Adam Munster Tiger from 24-7 Sports. This is one name I think you're familiar with, Dylan Edwards. He yes. mentioned that you've known him since he was very little. The fact that he was your first 2023 high school commit uh -huh. And the fact you've known him so long, did that kind of make that a little extra special? Yes, it, it made it special because I had a tremendous relationship with his parents. Um, coach Andre Hart, a linebacker coach, Coach Kevin Mathis, who coached with me from youth all the way up. We've coached that kid since he was, I think, five or six years old. So, and his, his uh, siblings. So, sibling, uh, it's a special bond, special tie with the family in we have the utmost respect for them that they would feel like we're capable of uh, really helping them mature that young man into a full grown man and help him uh, accomplish his dreams and visions and the things that he desire in life. So just knowing them and they know how we run a program, they know who we are because we've been doing it consistently ever since he was a kid. That's special. Dylan is a special kid. Hey, Coach Prime, uh, Pat Grant from the Associated Press. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, just curious, with all the new people coming in, all the new players coming in, how easy or how hard is it to integrate everything in, 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 in spring practice? Well, it, it's not easy. It's not that simplistic. But it, we have a great staff. I really feel like we have a tremendous staff. We have a track record that has notably won. And I'm not the coach that dictates everything. I want to hear all my coaches speak because they have so much. I just gave you how much, I mean, 244 years of combined coaching. I like to hear because I, I want to know what, what works. What do you think works? So I'm making sure my defensive coordinator, my offensive coordinator is satisfied as long as my special teams guy when it comes to compiling a practice. Coach Flea is the assistant head coach. We've been doing it together for the last two and a half years at Jackson. So you kind of know what I like as a schedule. And we're going to keep it moving and keep it fast and, and play fast and play quick, but it's going to be 100% effort. And that starts in the weight room, and it started uh, a week ago in the weight room. And those guys are working their butts off. I'm happy with what I'm seeing from these young men as well as coaches. Coach, Brian Howell from the Bowler Daily Camera. My man. Uh, you, you obviously played cornerback, so you know the value of that position. But mm -hmm. the, the quarterbacks in the Pac-12 are going to be tremendous next year. And you guys now have Travis Hunter, Cormani McLean. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about why that was such a, a big priority for you to make sure you got elite corners in this conference? I'm not just going to say this conference. Uh, you need elite corners and elite pass rushers from anywhere. A lot of coaches build inside out. Um, I build both ways. Um, I build outside in when I'm thinking defensively, okay? We're going to think the pass rush, the corners, the pass rushes, let's go get it. Okay, now let's go get the big boys to make sure they stabilize and control the run game. But when you're able to – attain a couple guys of that caliber, not only guys that are really good corner, but they make plays on the ball. Both of those guys have tremendous receiver ability and capability. And some of the other guys that we brought in and some of the guys we're bringing in, we're not done. This is just a, a pause. This is just a comma. Because there's a lot of people that's going to bungee jump in that portal after spring because they're going to be disappointed in the playing time and the commitment or the level of participation that they're garnishing. And we're going to take advantage of that. So we're not done. This is just a comma for spring. But I love where we are and what we have. I love the secondary for what I see on paper. Joe Rico, My Life Sports Radio, uh, the final word. How often do you players you know, ask you to reflect on your experiences in the game? Obviously, your Hall of Fame corner at the college and pro level. How, how often does that affect 
the recruits? Because I know, you know, speaking for myself, I think it would have a big impact, the fact that you've had such success in the game. I don't think when we're recruiting, they ask me to reflect on the game. They ask me to reflect on life. And they ask real true questions. You got to understand the kid is a young child. He don't remember me. I was, I was, I was I'm an old school guy. I'm old, you know. Their parents do. So the parents are fighting the consistency of the way I maintain life and the way I maintain myself and the consistency thereof. So more so than anything, we're not just connecting about football. We're connecting about life and navigating that kid through life because you know, if, if, if most of you've been to college, you know, shoot, from 17 to 21, that's a lot happens. And if you don't have a, a proper navigation system, you're gonna find yourself on the side of the road distraught and sad and hurt. And for us to be able to be there for those kids, but to keep them from going the wrong way or taking a left when they should have stayed right, that's tremendous. And that's who we are and that's what we're about. The game will take care of itself if they got the skill level. But the game of life don't play. It plays for keeps. Yeah. Right here, Mark Kisla, Denver Post. This program's gone from in my opinion. After Hold on, all, my AD just walked in. Everybody sit up. Everybody sit up right there. Yeah. Right. How you doing, sir? I'm an eye on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> behaving. I'm doing pretty good today. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. No worries. That, that's the boss. So, uh, This program's gone from an uh, afterthought, in my opinion, to the, you, you put the we come in X on its chest. Mm -hmm. How much is, how much do you embrace that? How much have players embrace that? And how much is attitude? I, I, don't, I don't know what an X on your chest means. The last man I know that, that was Malcolm. You know, I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, that's who we are. That's how we move. That's how we go about our business. And I'm coming comes from Constance Swartz over there, um, Coach Ray, Rick. I was sitting in a restaurant in Jackson, and God said, now. I picked up the phone, I called Constance, I called Ray, I say, please get uh, Rick on the phone. Rick got on the phone and I said, I'm coming. That's where that came from. <laughs> that's, that's truly where that came from. And he thought it was getting ready to say something else, but I, it was coming. He, he said he was prepared for the worst. I'm, no, you gonna prepare for the best, baby, I'm coming. So that's, who we are, that's what we are. I hear it all the time. Every time I take a picture with a, one of the mothers that the kids, she said, I brought my Louie. So that, I mean, that's just hilarious to me because they're listening to the, those things. But we embody that. We're training now in that weight room because we're coming. Our coach is up there pre preparing practice scripts and game plans because they're coming. I mean, these kids are, we're recruiting our butts off. We're not recruiting just no ordinary Tom, Dick, and Harry. Uh, we recruiting some guys that can light up their scoreboard and prevent touchdowns from occurring. We're coming, and we're serious about that. Coach Prime? Yes, sir. Uh, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Love that hat, man. I'm going to wear one just like it tonight at the little thing that we have, and I got a nice one, too. I, I look forward to it. Yeah. I want to see it. Hey, you know, off the top, you talked about how much you love Boulder. Yes. And how you come to love this place. Uh, you know what the history is here. You know what you've done in your past. But I'm wondering, when you put a class like this together, well, what are you presenting to the kids? What, what are you selling to? What's the pitch I, when, you, when you talk I to I don't them? sell nothing. That's the thing. It is what it is. Um, one of the first things I say, if you're here for NIL or to be rich, we're not the school for you. But if you're here to become a man, uh, get a degree, a tremendous education, and grow, win, and uh, go pro, possibly if you do all the correct things, we are. So we're not here for the NIL, we're here for the NFL, and we're here to make you a man. But we don't have anything for sale. I'm not selling, hey, you're going to be, I'm, I'm not, we don't do that. We're so honest and so genuine and so real with these kids and their parents, and I think they embrace that. They embody that. They understand that there's authenticity there. Any question that they could uh, ask a kid, just ask me um, about playing both sides of the ball. I say, yeah, if you dominate on one side, I'd be a fool to put you on both sides. You average, that makes me look stupid. You got to dominate on both sides of the ball. And I say, by the way, who else is going to let you do that? Who else have the capability to understand that besides me? I say, just ponder, just keep that in your mind when you go visit places. 
I don't talk about any other school. I ain't got time for that because I'm so engulfed in what we do. But when you make those comments, who else has the possibility? And the city sells itself. We don't have to sell it. You look at the darn windows and see those mounds, it's a wrap. I mean, this is over. Like, I mean, the city is beautiful, uh, virtually crime free. Everybody's been pleasant. Everybody's been wonderful. Everybody's been energetic and ecstatic about the potential of what we're putting together. You see it. You, you see we coming. You, 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 we can't wait and we're anticipating it, but you know what we're putting together, we're coming. Hey, Coach, I'm uh, Brandon Crisall from KOA Radio. Kind of piggybacking on that theme, yes. I know you expected that your first class might look like this, but in six weeks to put together a class with this type of recruiting, mm -hmm. w whatever the, you know, the enthusiasm around it and the rankings, are you pleasantly surprised that it came together so quickly and kind of maybe putting the rest of college football, I don't say on notice, no, but letting not. know what you could do in such short time. How would we be surprised about success? That means we really didn't expect success. If we're surprised about success, we expect success. We expect to go get that kid. The only thing could keep that kid from coming, bless you. The only thing that could keep, keep that, you say, I got back to focus, you see, I locked in and went there. The only thing to keep that kid from coming and signing with us is a bag, someone paying them, the collectives or whatever, and and that's it, and, and just out kicking the coverage, that, that, that's it. Because the coaching staff, um, the atmosphere, the city, uh, the publicity, the structure, the discipline, um, the academics, the graduation rate, uh, the food and the cafeteria, I could keep going because this thing is getting good. Just, just everything, it's hard to say no. It really is. And I put myself in that same situation like, because I want to know and I, and I got to feel what those parents are feeling because I'm a parent. And one thing I do tell the parents as well is I've sat in all three seats. They say, well, what do you mean by that, Coach Prime? I said, I've been the player and the kid that was being recruited. I've been the parent sitting right by the kid that's being recruited. Now I'm the coach, recruiting a darn kid. So mama, I know what you're feeling. I know, I know we gotta get the cafeteria right. We gotta make sure your baby eats right properly three times a day. I know the living, um, the housing and the dorms gotta be impeccable because you want your baby in a safe environment. I know those things now. We gonna take care of that. The rest is on him. He has to play and earn it. I can't help him do that, earn it, that's on him. But I could give him the navigation system to go get it. And that's one thing that we're doing. And our coaches have done a wonderful job. They've been embraced tremendously all around the country when they've gone in to uh, recruit these various states, these various schools, and these various cities. The reception has been tremendous. And we, um, we're just trying to focus on the things that we do right and eliminate the things that we're not doing right. That's the secret. Tony Gorman, Colorado Public Radio. Um, just a quick question, you elaborate, you talked about the NIL deals mm -hmm. and everything. Um, do you have, what kind of NIL deals are uh, these athletes are receiving right now? And um, just a follow up on that. One, at, one at a time, dog. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. 55. Yeah. Um, the, I, like one at, yeah, one at a time. The okay. NIL deals, I, I don't know what all deals they're receiving. I, I have no idea. I know I, we have a department for that that's doing a phenomenal job, and they're out doing some wonderful things. Our alumni, our donors, our boosters, or whatever you may call them, uh, are all taking notice, and they want to compete. They don't not only want, want to compete, they want to win. So they understand we're not just trying to make a kid rich. We're just trying to make sure he don't have uh, – his needs are met. We want to ensure that their needs are met on campus while they're a student, a collegiate athlete here. Okay, and to follow up th with that, uh, most of your recruits uh, through your 40, 40, 20 uh, recruiting strategy, most of them are coming from out of state. How do you plan to re recruit more in-state uh, athletes as well as keep the ones that are coming in from out of state? Uh, we, we, we recruit in-state athletes. We really do. We can't force them to say yes. We want them to say yes. Uh, we're getting ready to have another walk-on trial as well for a lot of players in, they have to be in the system, in, in this uh, school. And we're going to have uh, another uh, camp at the end. Of, we have several camps at the end of the season that we're playing. But we would love to attain all the talent that's in-state. That's our goal, to be dominant in-state. If a kid 
can play. We want him. We want him at this institution playing football for us. But we want him to be able to play, not just recruit him just because he's in state. He's got to be able to contribute and be dominant. Thank you, sir. Hi, Coach. Nikki how are you Edward. doing? Good, how are you? I'm Nikki Edwards, CU Sports Report. Your success has been reached due to the staff you have around you. Yes. How would you kind of say some words about them and the work that they've done in the past they're, two They're months? unbelievable. They're incredible. The recruiting coordinators on down, from Corey to, to, to Coach Ray, who's here, to uh, Rick sitting there on a, a, a couple, few families, several families the other day, um, and did a phenomenal job. So everybody's contributing. I mean, when you walk around this beautiful complex and it's impeccably clean, so you got to give credit to the custodians. I mean, when you're seeing the different things attached and associated, uh, I think we had a dinner in here, and uh, the, the serving lines was great, the food was great. It was unbelievable. So everyone is playing their role, and they're doing a phenomenal job. And, uh, and I love it. I absolutely love it. We have a commitment. I wish you could see it. I wish you could see us recruit. We have a commitment to excellence, and it's, and it's working, and we're winning. We're ecstatic about the potential, and we're just getting started. Hey, Coach. Uh, Tony Casolo, Buffalo's Wire. Um, you talked about the not only the seven players you signed from Florida this cycle, but the need to continue yeah. to recruit that state. Can you talk about the work that went in, you and your staff, opening up that pipeline that maybe CU hasn't had in the past? Well, I'm from Florida. I'm Coach Ray is from Florida. I think Coach Flea is from Florida. Who else on the staff from Florida? Right? Is that it? That's it. We got three uh, young men. Coach Brewster has recruited Florida. He was coach at the University of Florida. Um, a couple of years back, um, we all have ties uh, some way and another to Florida. And I love my Florida boys. Uh, it, it's just something about them that I adore. I think if you track down every successful team in uh, college football, you're going to track down some Florida boys that are making a tremendous difference. Not saying that the, the Georgia boys, they make this difference as well. Uh, the Texas boys make a difference as well. Uh, we want the Colorado boys to make a darn difference uh, tremendously, and they will. So uh, wherever the talent is, we're going to go get it. We've just been attracted to our Floridians because we have uh, relationships that afford us to do so, which is tremendous. Originally, Travis was a Florida boy. I don't know if you knew that. Florida boy. That's how all that started, being a Florida boy. Hey, Coach. Jake Schwanitz, DMVR Sports. How you doing? Um, doing Bless well. You. How are you? Uh, with Dylan Edwards, how do you see him fitting into your offense alongside Cavassier Smoke, and do you expect a big role for Edwards? Uh, with Dylan Edwards, I, I got to see him on the field. You know, I've seen him in high school. I got to see him get down. I expect a wonderful thing. I, I do know he's a competitor. I do know um, what I've seen him accomplish in that uh, Under Armour All-American game was tremendous, and his practice tape leading up to that was tremendous. We got to see him compete. Once we see them compete, then we can assess the talent and figure out how to best use him to make sure he's successful. That's on us. That's on our OC. That's on uh, running back coach, receivers coach. Dylan is a little hybrid. He, he, he does a, quite a bit. But he's explosive. And we like those explosive players that could change the, the game um, quickly. Hey, Coach. Jimmy Sierfus here, 247 Sports. You've only been here for a little bit, and you've yeah. changed everything from the way things are cooked. I mean, where do you see the biggest change in the way this program is run? Our, our attitude, attitudes, um, our attitudes. Everyone in this building has a commitment to excellence. Everyone in this building is on 10. Everyone in this building is like you're getting in the blocks and you stand on your mark. They're on their mark, get set, now they're ready to go. Everyone has a different pep and a step uh, about them. Everyone. They see it. They see that, you know, it can really happen. Um, hope has been uh, reestablished, I, I, I truly believe. I think it's been there, but sometimes you just need, need to, to light that switch of hope. And uh, hope is in the house. Hope is in the air. Hope is in the city. Hope is in the community. Hope is in, in, within you all. And you want, you want to write good stuff, man. You don't want to write bad stuff. You want to write good stuff. You know, you want to type good stuff. You don't write it. She, she's writing. But you want to type good stuff nowadays. I ain't nothing wrong with you, girl. You, you do your thing, baby. So we, 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 we love it. And uh, they've had it. You just had to reestablish it. This place is unbelievable. I think you see that. Uh, and, and I believe that. It, it's not even work to me. This is pure joy to get up and come to pure joy every day and smiling faces from the K 
cafeteria all the way walking on the floors when you're getting on the elevator with different um, persons. That one of my most enjoyable moments is in the cafeteria and seeing the other sports um, uh, participants, the players, the students eat, dine, uh, sit together. And it, it, that's one of my most enjoyable moments because I get to see everybody. And I, you know, when I go to a game or something, I, I can see them. And I, I even went to the lacrosse game this week. I couldn't stay long because we had some heck of recruits in the house. But that was beautiful. Uh, and I actually picked up a stick and, and, and threw the ball. I should have got into lacrosse like Jim Brown. I, I would think I'd have been nice with it. <laughs> a brother with a stick, ooh, that's something, eh? <laughs> Time for just one or two more, Vic. Go ahead. Hey, Coach uh, Vic Lombardi here, Altitude Sports. I know you uh, value speed. Yes. How much did you recruit speed? How fast is this team? Mm. And will you use pace to your advantage playing at altitude? I forgot half the stuff you said. Okay, <laughs> let me go through the first part: the speed, um, attributes, <sighs> smart, tough, fast. Discipline with character. Smart, tough, fast, discipline with character. Fast is definitely an attribute we recruit. Um, that does not just mean fast and speed. That means understand this playbook fast. That means comprehend decisions that you need to make fast. That means get your homework done or your assignments or whatever is your expectation is fast. If you get hurt, get your butt in the training room and heal and take care of your injuries fast. We just want you to grow and mature, uh, make the proper decisions fast. So fast is definitely an attribute, but it's not all attained to being on the field. We want fast young men off the field as well, able to uh, adapt to this environment real fast. What was part two of that? I forgot. There you go. <laughs> well, we, we, we're coming. We're coming. We, we share that. We share that. We got one more. Yeah, Coach. Uh, I think 29 of these uh, scholarship guys are going to be here this, uh, they are here this spring. Mm -hmm. How big of a deal is that for you as you guys are trying to build this to have those guys here? That's huge um, because these guys were recruited with a purpose. Our handprints are all over them. We, we feel like those are the guys that we, we wanted and we went and got, we secured. Now we need to see um, everything that we de desire to see. And a lot of these kids have tremendous opportunities because there's no pencil in starters, you know, pretty much. And pretty, you darn well know Travis and some of the other guys, they start, let's just don't get that confused. We don't need to be politically correct when there's a dog in the house, okay? But some of these guys have an opportunity to show us what they got. And I love it. That's what spring is for. Now we can assess the talent and make the proper uh, adjustments uh, from the portal shortly thereafter. And I love that because there's going to be a lot of talent in the portal shortly thereafter to garnish. And we live by 40, 40, 20. You know that. Is that it? Yes, sir, Coach. Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate, appreciate you. it. Thank you all. Uh, God bless you. Right with joy. Tight with love. God bless.